Hi everyone, my name is Salman and today we're going to be learning about the sine and cosine rule specifically for this question given over here. The question says that we have a triangle ABC and the length AB is given as 42 centimeters, BC is 37 centimeters and then we have finally AC is 26 centimeters. And the first part we have to find the angle A using the cosine rule. Then we'll go finding the angle B using the sine rule and lastly Using your knowledge of triangles, find the remaining angle. This remaining angle would be C, of course. So let's start off with the first part. So using the cosine rule, what is the cosine rule? So the cosine rule is given as A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of the angle A. And we use this formula to find the angle A. <coughs> The next step is labeling the sides appropriately according to this formula. So if we want to find angle A, this A would be the opposite angle, would be the opposite side, which is BC. So BC in this case is A. And now B and C, you can choose whichever one. So I'm going to call AC is B and let's call AB C. So let's plug it into the formula. We get A, which is 37 squared um, equals B squared which is AC 26 squared plus C squared which is 42 squared minus 2BC and BC is just 26 and 42 respectively cosine of the angle that we want to find so the next step I would do is expand this all out and try and get cosine A by itself. So 37 squared is 1369 is equal to 26 squared plus 42 squared on your calculator should be 2440 and I'm going to keep this as it is so 2 times 26 times 42 cosine A. The next step is I would minus 2440 from both sides. So we get 1369 minus 2440 equals minus 22642 cosine of the angle A. So minusing this, we end up getting minus 1071 equals negative 2 26 times 42 cosine of the angle A. So because we have um, negatives on both sides that would cancel so we end up getting just positives so essentially that would go like that and we can cancel that out. So the negatives cancel and then we're left with this expression. Now to get cosine A by itself, I have to divide by all of this over here. So my final result would be cosine A equals 1071 all over 2 times 26 times 42. And then finally to find the angle A, you have to do the inverse of cosine. Now the inverse of cosine is cosine A, the inverse is given as A equals cosine to the minus 1, whatever your angle is. <clears throat> so the final result would be A equals cosine or whatever your result. So in this case we're going to have cosine inverse which is represented by the minus 1 of all of this expression. So 1071 all over 2 times 26 times 42. And this, if you put it into your calculator, and your calculator needs to be in degrees, not radians, you will get 60.634135. And with angles, we tend to round it to one decimal place. So it'll be 60.6 degrees to 1 dp. 
And this is the result for part one. So now we're going to go on to part two. And part two says find the angle B using the sine rule. So I've put in from the previous video, we found out that angle A is 60.6 degrees. I've kept it to two decimal places for our calculations. So the sine rule. So the sine rule, if you're finding an angle, would be sine of the angle A all over the side A equals sine of the angle B all over the side B equals sine of the angle C all over the side C. Now, if you were to find a length, so the lengths are represented by A, B, and C, lowercase, then you'd flip it around, so it would be A over sine A um, equals etc. But in this case, we're going to stick to the, this formula because we want an angle. So, we're going to have angle B, so we want to find what this angle is. So ignoring, let's change this formula a bit. So we're going to have sine of the angle B all over the length B, because it's the opposite side, equals sine of the angle A, which we've already calculated. Opposite side of A is going to be BC. So if we plug into our formula, we would get sine of B all over, the opposite side is AC, AC is given as 26 centimeters, so we're going to have 26 equals sine of the angle A is given as sine 60.63 all over. The opposite side to angle A is BC. BC is given as 37. Now, the next step would be to rearrange this to get sine B on its own, and then later we will apply the inverse function of sine to get B. So if I just take this over here, we're going to have sine b all over 26 equals to this. To get sine b on its own, we're going to multiply both sides by 26, and that would get rid of the denominator over here. So we'll be left with sine b equals 26 times this whole result over here. Sine of 60.63 all over 37 and then the final step would be to do the inverse function so to get the angle B on its own we have to do the inverse of sine so B equals inverse sine represented by this negative 1 and it's going to be equal to all of this so it'll be in the brackets 26 times sine of 60 0.63 all over 37 and then finally you put this into your calculator and your calculator needs to be in degrees again you would end up getting 37.76214 and this keeps on going and again as I said with angles we tend to round it to one decimal place so angle B would equal 37.8, which is to one decimal place. So we have 37.8 degrees to 1 dp. And this is the solution to part 2 of the question. So the last part to this question says find the remaining angle. So part three, the remaining angle left is angle C. So we have to find angle C. Now we don't actually need to use the sine rule or the cosine rule to do this because we've already calculated in the previous two parts, angle A and angle B. So using the properties of a triangle, we know that all angles add up to 180 degrees and this is for any given triangle so if we know that all angles add up to 180 degrees 
we know that the previous angles we found, so 60.63 degrees plus 37, and I've kept it to 2 dp to make our calculations a bit more accurate, 37.76 degrees plus the angle C should equal 180 degrees. Now all we have to do is rearrange this to get angle C. So C equals 180 degrees minus, I'm going to be taking um, 60.63 to that side and I'm also going to be taking 37.76 to the other side. So it will be negative 37.76 degrees. Now, if you put this in your calculator, you can work out that the angle C is equal to 81.607857, and this continues to go on. And again, as I said, with angles, we tend to round to one decimal place. So we are left with 81.6 degrees to 1 dp. And now we found all the angles in the triangle and they should all add up to 180 degrees. Thank you for watching.